Hey everybody, QuestWise here with another video. Today we're going to go down Nostalgia Lane a little bit. wanted to do a video about the top 10 things I learned in life from Dungeons & Dragons. Now, again, a little bit of a backstory, and I'm sure you heard this, uh, a little bit of the story when I did the video on um, Palladium Fantasy and how I spent a lot of time with D&D and how I'd come back home after learning how to play Palladium and not being able to find it right away, and so I, I uh, took up the uh, the game of D and D, and at that time, second edition, and it really had a big impact on my life. And so, when I was planning out my next video for today, I, I thought, you know, why not do a top ten list of the things that I learned uh, in life from D and D because it had a huge influence on me and then had a very big impact on my life. Uh, so this is a sort of nostalgic kind of thing. These are the first books that I ever owned. Um, this is the second edition Player's Handbook. I I love this book. I have two copies of this book. Now, this is my actual original copy. Uh, as you can see, the spine is sort of peeling away and wearing out. But um, uh, the great thing, I mean, these were $20 back in the day for a hardcover book. Um, which, you know, then, I think even then was still a lot of money. Uh, you know, I guess it would be comparable to the $50 from today that we're spending. Uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. I think this is probably my favorite piece of artwork. This is the thing that inspired me the most when I was playing the game. Um, I spent a lot of time just staring at this artwork. Again, this is my, my, my original copy. It's, it's pretty, it's seen some better days, but, uh, I keep these around just because this this is my original. These are my originals, and these are the ones that I, you know, really built this top ten list. So, without further ado, uh, let's start off. We'll start off with number ten. I didn't do these in really any particular order, although number one has the most impact, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, of the whole list. So, number ten of the top ten things I learned in life from Dungeons and Dragons is an appreciation of history for an appreciation for history. Excuse me. Within these books, there were these little sidebars um, that were kind of like a bluish or grayish tint. And they would always have a thing like after the description of the fighter, it would list the thing and be like, this is a historical version of a fighter. And I would have Alexander the Great, Beowulf, I was really intrigued by those little sidebars. And because of those sidebars, especially like on wizards, you know, like Merlin was a, was a wizard. Um, it made me want to go and read more history. It made me want to go and find out who these historical people were and what their time lines were like and where, where the, what their history was like. And so I grew to love history, and it made me eventually drove me to go on to study history in college. Um, but I think that was the first and foremost is that I really learned to appreciate history and appreciate different eras of history as well. Uh, so that's number ten, an appreciation for history. Number nine, basic math skills. I've always been bad at math. Always, always been bad at math. Um, but D&D &D was something that really helped me with just basic math skills. In D&D, &D, you know, you're rolling some dice, you're adding some modifiers, you're you know, subtracting things here, you're adding things there. And in this edition, you even had Thaco, which is like when you're 14 years old, like trying to do a calculus problem to try to plan the trajectory of the cheese to go into the moon. I mean, that's crazy. But once I got those figure those things figured out, it made other math skills easier. It made me um, uh, a little bit stronger in 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 school and in, in my math pursuits there, my math classes there. Uh, so I, I I have to attribute my basic math skills to D and D and and letting me think quickly on the fly about sort of adding certain modifiers here and there and and subtracting and and adding you know. Um, armor classes and whatever there. But again, helped me in life uh, to better my, my math skills. Number eight is improved vocabulary. I probably was the only kid 
of about 13, 14 years old and knew what a trebuchet was. Um, no kidding. Uh, I, it, it gave me an appreciation for um, the different types of armor, what a curious was, what a coifer was, um, what greaves were. I mean, it really improved my vocabulary by giving me an entire set of, uh, again, more historical things, but as well as mythological terms and stuff that I would have to learn uh, to, to better appreciate the game. I really think, and I'm, I'm almost, I say think, but I'm positive, that a lot of these games were actually written for adults. And I know the original was, because, you know, Gary Gygax was writing to his friends, his fellow colleagues, his 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 group of gamers, and they were all adults. Um, so second edition was definitely one of those, those games that did not dumb down anything as well. Um... There's, you know, it's it's still written for a very sort of uh, adult crowd, so it helped me uh, build my vocabulary quite a bit. Uh, number seven, how to follow rules, or sometimes how to break them. D and D will it, it helped me learn how to tell a story in a structured environment. It's not so much improv, though there's a lot of improv involved in the process of storytelling. Because there's a structured set of rules and how to play the game and how to conduct um, overcoming obstacles or how to conduct combat, it gave me a sense of how to tell stories and how to do things within an environment that had a structure of rules. It, 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 that definitely helps you in life as well too. How to get the most out of something when you have to when you're you know structured by a set of rules in life, and how to best use your imagination to overcome those or use those rules to your advantage um, to to get the results that you want. Number six, the thrill of reading. You will be a better player. You will be a better game master, dungeon master, if you will. You will be a better, more well-rounded person the more that you read. I'm not saying this because my profession is a bookseller. Um, I'm not trying to make more money off of you all. But I truly believe the more that you read, the more intelligent you will become the better storyteller you will be. The better characters you will create uh, because of the amount of stuff you read. It gives you a broader sense of, of what people are writing, what people are doing. Um, and it gives you more ideas to grow from. Um, and not only will it help you in life, but it will help you in your D&D life as well too. Creating better stories, creating stories with more depth, uh, more breadth. Um, so read, reading that was, and, and I read voraciously as a kid. I still read to this day, uh, not as much as I used to only because I blame the internet, but, uh, I, I would find an author as a kid and just plow through everything that those authors would have. And, uh, I think it really helped me in my, my creative thinking. It helped me in my, in my everyday life of sort of, uh, you know, Knowing things, learning things, and teaching myself uh, things about life. Number five is how to wait my turn. Very important. When you're playing D&D, when you're playing any sort of role-playing game, for the most part, because, and this kind of goes back to the rules again, you have sort of a structure. You have to learn how to wait your turn. You have to learn patience. Because if you're just talking over each other all the time and you're trying to interrupt people, it doesn't make the game flow very well. Now they're you know so initiative learn how to use initiative um, to your advantage and 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 so I was I learned how to be patient and how to wait my turn and how to best bide my time so that when it was my turn to act when it was my turn to do something I was well prepared for that. Number four, how to solve problems as a team. I think this one was really important to me. It helped me become a better team player so 
not only did it help me learn things like um, how to follow rules and how to uh, wait my turn and how to best bide my time, but it also made me a better person when it came to um, working as a team. Using those skills of working within rules and and then and in the structure of um, waiting my turn while working with a team and trying to solve problems, overcome obstacles, and uh, you know to decipher riddles. Riddles. So that was a very important key that I learned from D and D. That uh, it was that that idea that if you you know if you worked as a team, you could overcome these obstacles and 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 create these adventures. Um, and that, that definitely transfers into life very well when you have to go work for a company, unless you work absolutely by yourself at home from the computer and you don't talk to anybody else and I'm not really sure how you make any money that way. Um, those are skills you're going to need in life. And I think that that was a very influential one for me as well, too. Speaking in, in that, in, in within that one, speaking, um, in front of people, public speaking as well, um, can be a big problem for some people. They just can't seem to, to you know, overcome their fear of speaking in front of people. Playing D and D as part of working with a group definitely, definitely helps me with that as well. Too I have no fear of talking in front of people now. Number three, creation of worlds. And this kind of goes back to reading again. My thrill of reading. Um, it. It showed me how to construct imaginary places. It showed me how to construct um, uh, worlds and cities and, and, and kingdoms all within a sort of structure of, of not so much rules, but within, you know, within a structure, within an, an idea that you can you know, build around a, a structure of, of how cities work and how worlds work and how climate you know, areas, regions work. And so that was giving me playing D and D, growing up playing D and D, and, and gave me a greater appreciation of how to create worlds and how to maybe bring that to my own, you know, workspace or my living space, um, and how to create um, better places uh, within those within those structures, whether it be the walls of my home or or the you know the the the, the building of my where I work. Uh, creating worlds. And I think this kind of harkens back, and this, this always reminds me when I say creation of worlds, reminds me of the quote from, from Tolkien that said that we were all created to be creators, and we're expected to, to create better places and, and create things in life. Um, on to number two. Number two, uh, <laughs> how fun it is to roll dice. Uh, I know this sounds like a Obviously, you know, oh, it's, yeah, yay, it's fun to roll dice. Um, what I mean by that and how it became a life skill for me and not just, it is fun to roll dice, um, but basic probability. So this goes back to a little bit with math skills, but this, you know, after you've rolled dice for a while, you, you sort of, you you begin to learn how the structure of certain dice work together or how modifiers apply to a certain die roll and what you can expect from those die rolls as well. How that applied to my life was that I could then apply those, uh, those terms of those ideas of probability to things like payroll or to my bank account or to uh, tax when I go into a store. Those are ideas of, of probability and of how modifiers work with other Things. So again, how uh, how basic probability or how fun it is to roll some dice. And number one, finally, most importantly, and again, I said I didn't do these in any particular order, but number one, I feel for me, most importantly, never split the party. I think this is just a basic thing for me to learn, and I learned from D&D, is that there's diversity in the world. And diversity is a good thing, but not diversity in that we need to be divided. Diversity in that, that we need to stand together or we fall. The most important thing I learned from playing D&D was to never split the party. 
once the party was split, your characters began to die very quickly. They were overcome by obstacles. They were overrun by enemies. But together we all stood a chance, or we all fell together. And so that was a very important life lesson to me, was that no matter who you are, where you are, or what you are, we all serve a purpose in life. And because of those things, that makes us stronger together. And the more that we fight and divide ourselves, um, the worse it's going to be. And the easier we're going to fall and, and be susceptible to outside forces. So, if anybody has any comments, anybody has any other games besides D&D that, you know, maybe influenced your life a lot more than... I mean, like, again, I'm just using D&D because... Uh, especially second edition because that was the one that I spent the most time with growing up and that's the thing that kind of influenced me so if there's any anybody out there who's watching if there were other games that sort of influenced you more or if you have some things that influenced you from D&D &D that I, maybe I skipped over that were, that were more important to you please leave them in the comments and stuff below I would love to read them I'd love to respond to them I'd like to put out my first video response request if there's anybody out there who has some influences that they'd like to share as well too. Please put out a video re response to this. I would like to think I really dig these ideas of the video response and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Until then, thank you so much for watching QuestWise and we're out.